Hey guys, in this video I'm going to build a dirt bike trailer for $760 that will hold three dirt bikes. Please like, subscribe, and hit the reminder next to subscribe. We're doing lots of dirt bike videos. Hey guys, last video I was talking about the upgrades I should do to the bikes that I just bought. Um, my son and I just bought dirt bikes and looking forward to getting them out. We've been riding a little bit. Um, but I got a lot of feedback that we should just ride them and get them out and maybe some people suggest to get through 10 tanks of gas before we really start doing major upgrades. And so I think that's good advice. And I've been working with Lance at um, Performance Cycle of Colorado, and he's been helping me a lot find grips and things like that and uh, uh, all the different parts. And so he's, he's been helping me a lot with that. And so I'll be ordering parts from, from there and I'll show the upgrades with parts I chose, why, and, and all those upgrades. But to get these out and get through 10 tanks of gas, we have to be able to get them on the road and have to be able to drive. And I don't have any way to get two bikes anywhere. We have, uh, I'll show you what we were using. It's, uh, it's over here, this trailer hitch. And these things, that, because of how it fits on the Range Rover, I had to use an extension uh, so it could come out a little bit. And because of that, that thing sags a lot. There's, it felt really sketchy even having one bike on it. There's no way I'm putting two bikes on that. So that's out. We've been looking at vans. Um, vans that we really wanted were too high to fit in the garage, so that's not gonna happen. We've been looking at trucks. The trucks I want are 40 or $50,000. And so, you know, I just don't want it to ride dirt bikes. I don't wanna make that kind of investment. And so, looking at trailers and, um, you know, the trailers, Looking at used trailers, uh, they take a lot, a lot of space and everything in the in the garage. So I really wanted to uh, one that could fit upright and stand upright. And looking at those, they were any, anywhere from twenty five hundred to like sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred to twenty five hundred. And I thought, you know, we could make our own based on. Um, and so um, there's hard, a lot of different parts and things you can buy at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has some pretty inexpensive trailers, so I want to show you over here what we bought. Okay, so here's what we picked up from Harbor Freight. We have, um, this came in this box. This box is all beat up. There are parts falling out of it, so hopefully, um, hopefully that, work, that works. Um, but this is nice, heavy, heavy duty um, utility trailer. 1700 pound capacity it's a four by eight um four by eight so it's designed the sheet of plywood can can fit on top of it but it also folds up into a two by five area on the floor so you can stick it in the corner i also got a tongue box for it and um so that we can store um, straps and things like that whatever we want a can of gas in in the tongue box got these wheel chocks these aren't super heavy duty wheel chocks but these are super cheap um we got a, a jack a jack for the front of it we got a um, spare tire carrier i have to go to a different store to get the spare tire but we're going to put all that together um, then make a few modifications to it so we can um, we can put motorcycles on it and i'm going to show that process and i think we can get this done for under a thousand for sure uh, probably around under 800 to um, versus 16, 1700, 2500. So it'll be brand new, nice trailer with some decent compa capacity. And I'll show all that process. Okay, I think this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to start taking it apart, read the instructions. I don't think there's any rocket science to this. I'll do a little time lapse video of it, but uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. Just putting this utility utility trailer together. It's um, from uh, Har from Harbor Freight. It does have nice red paint. Uh, when you look at it on online, at least to me, it looked orange. So I'm glad that this is it's a red trailer, not an orange trailer. Start taking it apart and putting it together.
Okay, here are all the parts after I got them out of the box. Actually, a lot of parts here. <laughs> a little bit intimidating. Look at this sack of uh, bolts. That's a lot of bolts. So, I'm sure it goes pretty fast, but... Um, I will say the metal seems pretty heavy duty. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. It's definitely going to be a heavy duty trailer. I'd, I'd plan to put Loctite on everything, but these do have um, those uh, plastic washers. I can't remember what they're called. You know, and those, in my experience, hold pretty well. So I'm not going to put any extra Loctite on it. Um, okay, trying to keep this square while you're just tightening these bolts, I think is a, sort of a lost cause. I think try to get it roughly square, but it... Um, it moves around a lot. I think you just have to wait till you get the plywood or whatever you're going to put on top and then square it up. Well, that's one day. That's about four hours in and uh, we got just that piece assembled. A lot of bolts. Okay, um, I'm actually three hours in, not four hours in, like I said. Um, so we're um, getting ready to get started again, and I expect probably another three hours. So uh, we'll see how long. I think at least five to six hours to just to put this thing together. Okay, this is about um, four and a half hours in, and pretty much all I have left is this hitch and the lights. The only thing that makes me nervous is this wheel spins pretty freely, and this one spins okay, but it stops pretty quick, so I don't know. And it makes a little bit of noise too. So that one makes me nervous. So I might take that off again. But I'm going to take a little break. And uh, hopefully in the next hour and a half, I'll finish th at least this part up. Then we can start adding the top on. Okay, only one thing that I'm hitting. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but it feels like uh, this should have a hole in the middle of it because it lines up here and then you can't stick the wires through. So I'm going to just drill a hole for the wires to go through. Yeah, so I just mounted this. Um, I did put Loctite on these ones because uh, they don't. And I'm just going to drill, drill through that black hole to feed the wires. Okay. Hole is drilled. Get those wires through. Should be set. Okay, all I've got really got left is a uh, wire in here. And uh, I started on that yesterday and then realized my Range Rover doesn't have any plugins for the for the trailer wiring. And uh, so I spent half a day trying to use one of those kits to wire it in. The Range Rover adapter is $500. So uh, at the end of the day, the wiring is so screwed up on the Range Rovers that... I ended up paying $500, but I spent half a day trying to wire uh, you know, a $30 adapter from, um, from AutoZone. So that failed. So I'll go ahead and wire this up, but I don't have anything to wire it to, to or to plug it into to test until that part arrives.
Okay, I had a friend advise that I uh, use some of this to protect the wires. So it lasts a little longer, so I'm going to do that. Okay, it's time for a little break. I've been using this, uh, there you go, show it. this stuff to, um, to wrap the wires. It's actually working pretty well, it's wrapping things, um, wrapping the wire really well. It makes, it makes it look a lot cleaner, plus protect the wires. The nice thing is, you get the size. I noticed these holes, so I'll go reroute the wire, these holes right here. This will actually stuff through there. I can run it through that all the way down this rail and won't leave leave some extra here. But it's working out pretty well to do it that way. This is kind of funky because this bar will have to swing this uh, bar will have to swing down when you fold it. So this comes all the way down here. You got to kind of uh, kind of go under to allow that clip to operate. So that was a little funky, but with the black it. Uh, kind of cleans everything up a little bit and just zip tying stuff down we we'll take a little break um, and then I'll, I need to buy some more of this here's exactly what I bought so 3 8 inch wire conduit so okay I picked up a few things when I put uh, grab some of this quarter inch this is from uh, from Harbor Freight, it's only four bucks, a uh, quarter inch, and I think that will fit through these holes a little better. Um, so that should fit nicely through there. This uh, three eighths, I had to kind of stuff stuff through there. I think that quarter inch should be fine, big enough for the wires. The other thing, I, uh, I'm gonna run ground wires. I saw somebody had done that on YouTube, run ground wires, because I don't trust the ground, you know, getting uh, through this entire frame. So I'm gonna run ground wires all the way to the back um, I had, so I'm getting, uh, I got some of these and, um, and look at nicely. I already had these self-tapping screws, so I'll redo this. I had just done this, which is not what, not what you want. So I'll do self-tapping screws and run ground wires all the way through rather than running ground through the frame. Okay, this quarter inch fits through here perfectly, but it won't fit here through here with the tape on. So wait to tape it until you until you get it um, get it all the way through. Okay, I had to leave a bunch of excess wire down there. Um, if you it seems like a lot, but when you when you open it, that definitely gets used up. So. Yeah. So, but I've got that uh, protective uh, conduit around it, so it should be okay. Okay, the trailer is pretty much finished, uh, at least this pot, bottom part, um, and then I'll add all the boxes, the jacks, and obviously the, t the top and, and everything else. But I wanted to show the wiring at this, at this point and what I did. Um, I, uh, I used this, this conduit, this plastic conduit, pretty extensively everywhere just to protect the wires. Um, but I just want to go through and show what I did because it's um, you don't really give you clear instructions. I did go over the top of some of these bars, but they don't matter. It doesn't matter there. Um, I had to under here. I had to go under kind of um, go under there, and the wires come come through this bottom piece, and then loop around, come back up here. Get a good shot of that. All right. Um, I left this open 
just until I test it to make sure that's the only part that I'm not sure if that's a good connection. And then, uh, and then you know, the, the right side trailer wires go over here. Uh, the other thing I did is I ran a ground, except for this back here, I didn't run a ground this one, I'll show you, show you why, but I ran a ground along this. Um, I just don't feel, especially since it's a folding trailer, I don't feel like it, um, you'll get the ground that you need all the way back. These fit really nicely through here. I attached it there. Now this is about the loop you need, and I tested it. I would highly recommend that you fold your trailer while you're, test, while you're wiring it, and make sure that this is enough, because this takes a surprising amount of, uh, of uh, wire to get around it once it's folded. So this is just here, and then all the way way back here and then really tried to expose as least wire as possible on this okay so that's all, all grounded and you can see okay now I grounded it from this I, it's obviously grounded to the frame but I grounded it all the way around to this side as well and so um, theoretically I wouldn't have to do that wire but I, again I just don't that I have a direct wire for the ground. Um, and, that's connected. and this wire, because of that, I don't have a ground going back up, but this is the same as the other side. And then that one. So, just wanted to show that wiring because it's not very clear, honestly, in the, in the, how you wire it or how you hang the wires. It doesn't show it very well in the instructions. Okay, I took the trailer to Home Depot, and, or actually to Lowe's, and picked up a bunch of stuff um, to finish it out. First is uh, three-quarter inch plywood. Uh, I'm actually going to paint that. I have some leftover house paint, so I'm going to paint it uh, a gray color. And then for the front of these, just because um, I'm going to put some angle iron, some really th thick angle iron. Uh, like this it's actually going to be on the front of it. it's hard to hold it hold it but that's going to extend out just a little bit like that so we have some tight some more leverage on the tie downs that go to the, the handlebars on the motorcycle and then um, got a ton of hardware um, I got some uh, some galvanized bolts to and I'll, I'll list everything I got galvanized bolts to hold down these um, wheel chocks um, I've got uh, some I'll show later how I'm doing some, some cotter pins for a system along with the fence post that I'm going to use on the back so I have some support while I'm lifting the I will show that but support while I'm lifting well, I'm using a ramp on the back to get the motorcycles up otherwise this will just the back will just push down couple of ideas on how I do that I might go a different route but uh, the cotter pin is to hold that um, hold that fence post I got this uh, little lighter weight angle iron to I'll cut that up and it'll be guides for the for the tires in the back just so they don't move around um, what else uh, a bunch of screws just to hold down the ply just uh, oh those are actual screws uh, these are um, some bolts to hold down the, the plywood um, and I'll show as I'm using that some lock washers so these are um, here you go I, I think two boxes uh, one box of those one quarter inch by one and two boxes of these um, galvanized along with uh, lock washers, it's all three eighths, and uh, some, some washers, just to hold down the plywood all the way around. I'm gonna start uh, cutting this plywood, and then I'll paint it, and then uh, we'll start start putting everything together. Uh, we still have a spare tire carrier that we're gonna put on, still have the trailer uh, tongue box that we're gonna put on, and uh, the, obviously the chucks, and Getting closer. All 
Okay, I got the um, got the first coat painted here, and it lo actually looks really nice. That gray that just happened. I had to, happened to have some leftover house paint, but that gray looks really nice with the black and the red. And so I need some uh, just to have some extra house paint anyway for. And so I went and bought the, another another gallon because I was only put, only able to put one coat on the top and nothing on the bottom. So I'm going to do the whole. Uh, do it two sides, but it's looking nice enough where now I, this uh, this line that I made I did it try to do it with a jigsaw and the laser sort of lied to me so it um, so I want to redo that so I bought a just a thirty dollar circular saw and I'm gonna redo this line and then put two coats of paint on it and then we'll keep going and blades sold separately so back to the store I go. So much better, cleaner cut. Definitely better. Okay, the top's all painted. Um, it looks pretty nice how it's painted um, the red and the black and the gray looks pretty good now I'm gonna um, these screws here are still on so I'm gonna pull all those out all the screws all the way around I've seen people do, use, use different methods some people route out or chisel out room for them here I'm gonna actually take them out and replace them and drill all the way through and uh, I'm gonna mount uh, you'll see uh, I'm going to mount some um, some tie downs here as well and it's going to uh, be connected to that bolt. Okay, I got some of these one and a half inch uh, three eighths inch hex bolts, and those look, I'm going over the top of these, go, going through, and for the most part, it's long enough. But on the corners, I'm doing these um, these thick plates. It's just not not going to be long enough, so I had to go back and get some two inchers. So um, I'm using two inch on the corners, uh, and one and a half everywhere else. Okay, not much left here. Um, I just uh, I took these these things out the front. Just FYI, lesson learned: you don't need to install these at all. There's a lot of wasted effort. I'm gonna end up taking all these off. The nice thing is, um, when you do take them off, it gives you a lot of extra bolts, and uh, more importantly, like the nuts. So those nuts are kind of hard to come by, and they definitely fit on these. Um, 3 8 inch they fit on the 3 8 inch uh, bolts just fine so all the bolts that I put around to hold the plywood down I was able to reuse um, these extra nuts so that's nice um, now I'm just putting these um, taking some angle iron and I'm I'll just cut cut this piece in half and then um, I'll, I'll put it out seven inches here which is about the same width as the tire there and drill some drill some holes bolt it in and on each side have two pieces here and then cut a hole here to put a so I can have a hook for a strap and then then that piece will be done then I'll um, test test the bikes and see 
um, see where they fit, see, see the best center of balance for it, for them, and then I'll put all the, um, everything to hold the bikes from the, on the top. Okay, just getting a shot of what this actual angle is, three six inch, so one and a half, four feet, three sixteenths. Okay, one thing I noticed, I did take this down to the DMV to get it tagged, um, but I haven't. So I've had it had it out on the road a little bit. Um, and these hubs, this one's not too bad. I think on the, on the other side, it did loosen up a little bit. So I would just say, make sure, yeah, this one, this one has a lot of play in it. So I would just say, readjust after you've been a few miles on it, you know, that grease really settles in and everything. Just make sure you re readjust the wheels. I'm going to take the these hubs back off here and uh, tighten down that nut. Just readjust those after you've been a few miles. Okay, I got, bought some smaller angle iron. Let's see what size this is. Eighth inch by one and a quarter uh, by six feet. And I'm going to cut uh, six, I bought two of these pieces. I'm going to cut six two foot strips of this. And this is going to be, I'm going to lay, lay these pieces down in two foot strips to hold, hold these back tires. Just keep them from sliding. Um, sliding, obviously, it'll be strapped down, obviously, but just keep them from moving when they're strapped down on the table on the trailer. Okay, now this trailer is a tilt trailer, and you can um, actually, there's some pins here that you can take out, and this this whole bed tilts back. But I don't know, I, I, might, I might try it, if I saw I'd do a video of it, I might try tilting the trailer and try to put the motorcycles up on it, but I don't think that'll, it seems kind of sketchy trying to uh, take take a, a bike like this, even though these aren't super heavy bikes, take a bike like this up and then have it, have the tilt, have the trailer tilt forward and then do the second bike. So that seems kind of sketchy as a strategy. So I do have this ramp, I'll probably, um, I do have this ramp and then I will, but if I put the ramp on the back, it's going to put pressure down and then that's so I would need something to counteract that. So these things here i'm gonna i thought about just reversing the direction of these flipping them over and then having a a um, a piece of two by four that sits here um, that just goes goes in there that i can pop in there to, uh, to act as a stand which i think it'd probably be okay but i'm gonna have there may be on uneven surfaces and things like that so i think what i'm going to do is take this tab try to bend that out or cut that off and have two by four where it uh, slips down in there and then have i bought some cotter pins i can just pop a cotter pin in there to hold it that'll be a better strategy so go ahead and do that oh, okay it's not the prettiest but that tab bends out pretty easily just using some channel locks and so and that'll allow me to slide a two by four down in there, stick a cotter pin in there, and uh, and that should act as a pretty good stand, so I can support the ramp and the motorcycle going up. Okay, I'm gonna cut this board actually, and uh, I'm gonna create two two feet two foot pieces, and I know I have to rip it a little bit to get it to fit into this hole, but um, but. Uh, just create two by four two foot pieces which means it'll stick up a few inches a few inches I'll drill multiple holes in it for different positions just in case I'm on an uneven surface and I uh, so I have a little bit of play which means it'll stick up and I'll have to, the ramp will have to go around it where that's not there which I think will be okay
And one thing is probably specific to me, but these do have LED lights, which is really cool. I mean, they draw like zero amperage almost. Um, but from my, at least for my Range Rover, it's a real problem because my Range, the Range Rover has these pulses that it sends out to detect whether a, a trailer is attached, and then it'll, it'll adjust. You know, it'll adjust the the shift points. It'll adjust the suspension and everything based on that. So it can, sends out these constant shift, the constant pulses. Well, these are so, you know, it's caused so much um, little power to light up. Those pulses actually make it flash. And not only that, the Range Rover doesn't detect that there's a trailer here because this doesn't draw enough current. And so I'm actually replacing those. That these I can for fifteen dollars you can buy a kit of incan incandescent um, incandescent lights off of Amazon. So well, it's under twenty dollars anyway. So I just ordered a. I'm just I looked at a lot of different options. People put resistors in here that get really hot and stuff like that, and it just seems a little sketchy to me. There's also adapters that you're supposed to be able to get. It also seems sketchy to me. The simplest way is just replace the lights. I mean that's probably a 30 minute job and um, and uh, we'll solve the problem. Okay, I just used a half inch blade to uh, cut every two inches. This is, I haven't cut these yet just because I'm not trying not to wake up the neighbors, but um, that's the top, basically the top of the board and cut every, every two inches going down just cut uh, cut five holes and that's the next section so then I'll, I'll make these cuts okay here's the cotter pins I got they're 7 16 cotter pins um, and they won't quite fit in here uh, I'm just gonna drill them out it's really really close I'm gonna just drill it out it'll be fine but um, could go a little bit smaller on the cotter pins I guess I'd rather have thicker and drill it out Actually, seven sixteenths. My I do have a seven sixteenths drill bit or, or um, one half inch drill bit, but uh, my drill is too big for chuck on my drill. So I'm gonna have to get some different size cotter pins. Seven sixteenths is too big. These are three eighths, basically holes, and so I'll get the next size smaller. Okay, so for these, these are going to hold the rear tires. I'm just going to drill two holes on every two foot section to, and I'll hold them down with these little um, uh, lag screws. There's the, the lag screws, just quarter inch lag screws by one inch. Um, should hold well enough just for what that, for the purpose of those. If, if you wanted to attach any tie down hooks or anything like that, I'd probably go all the way through and. Um, but this will make it easy to, to move them around if I need to. Now, I knew this, but these won't quite, the 2x4 won't quite fit in there. Um, so, it looks like uh, width-wise it's fine. I'm just going to have to make a quick rip up the sides to, um, to get that to work. I have to break out the table saw for that. Okay, I'm actually going to see if I can rip with the skill saw. It's not uh, probably not the safest, but I don't want to. My my uh, table saw is kind of buried, so let's see how this works. Okay, ripping with the skill saw was pretty easy, actually. Uh, so, I've never done that before. I always use a table saw, but my table saw is buried, so this fits. This fits in there perfectly now. So I'll use that. Um, now those pins won't fit in there, but I'll use that. Uh, I'll use uh, just a bolt for now. Those, I think I'll paint those black, but I think those um, should work pretty well. I will, I'll get cotter pins. I just jammed some bolts in there now, but 
the extra cotter pins for those. Okay, I cut off all the corners of these and then I'll grind them a little bit too just so they don't pop tires if I accidentally run over them while they're up there. Also did that here just to help um, and I'll uh, grind those as well just in case somebody does catch a corner. Okay, I've got all these uh, edges rounded off so I don't think they'll cut any tires. And then um, we've got these, these two. So now these are ready for paint. I'm just gonna uh, spray paint them black. That's wide too. Uh, just over there. Okay, so I've got all the the metal painted, um, and I also have the these painted back here. That looks pretty nice. That should work well. We'll see how that works. So now it's just a matter of getting the rest of the stuff on, and. Um, I'm gonna actually put the bikes on to see where these where I'll fit these and make sure the the balance is right in terms of weight. And I've got to put this box on, and that's it. Should be done. Okay, we got these on. Um, now I'm gonna actually put the bikes on and measure it out um, and test the weight. Uh, we're going to try to get about 10 to 15 percent of the weight on the hitch and so to do that i've got to hook it up to the car or the, the truck and put the bikes on and see where the center of gravity is so um, about to go do that okay one last thing i forgot to do this i want to make a groove for this and this end of the ramp to fit along here so i'll just let me just rip one, probably with the skill saw. Um, just rip a groove here that will fit for that. Okay, I just cut a little groove here um, for that lip to hold. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. No, don't do this.
What do you think, Carson? I like it. Pretty cool? Yeah. You think we should go later? Huh? Well, yeah, I think we should. Okay, I spent a lot of time getting the rate, weight right and the position right of these bikes. Both two things you're dealing with. One, the straps have to work with the bikes and make sure you can actually get to the, the chocks. There's a tie down here and uh, there's actually this too. So like this bike that's over here, I would uh, use this tie down out here these seven inch extensions out here and then tie it to this corner so i wouldn't take it all the way i'd just take it to this corner where there's a d ring right there okay but anyway i, I put them on in different configurations and tested the weight i actually what i did um the tongues out here obviously i would take um put it on put it on the hitch unattached and then I put bathroom scales and did the math you know subtracting out my weight and I would just lift the, the tongue of the trailer and w actually weigh it so with two bikes on it um, the tongue is 90 pounds with no bikes nothing on it it's 50 pounds with two bikes on it it's 90 pounds um, and with two bikes on it with one center it's 70 pounds so it um, you know, it's a little, the middle one's a little far back, so a little further back. So I wanted to make sure that it doesn't go too far back. I still want, but anyway, you get it with one bike um, on the outside, it's 50 pounds, uh, sorry, 75 pounds on the tongue. So those are pretty, pretty good. Basically, you just want to make sure that there's enough weight on the tongue. Ideally, it's 10 to 15% of the total load is on the tongue. So... You know, if this is about 600 pounds with two 300 pound bikes, um, plus the trailer, which is maybe another 300 pounds, I'm not sure, is 900 pounds, probably a little less than that. Uh, so with two bikes on there, 90 pounds, that's about 10%. So it's really good. And it pulls awesome in this weight. Also, one of the things you have to, you want to actually strap the bikes down. Put the bikes on before you nail anything down. Put the bikes on with the straps make, and make sure you measure it. Um, and make sure the straps, you know, you're not hitting another bike with one of the straps and things like that. Okay, and that's before you tie stuff down. Um, or, you know, drill drill holes and things like that. So I, um, what I ended up with here was, and you'll probably be pretty close, and most bike, dirt bikes have similar dimensions, so two and a half, um, inches here to the out, outside. You don't want to go too much further out because you start to lose the leverage here. Um, so two and a half in, or two and a quarter inches here and three and a quarter inches here to the front of that wheel chock. And this is the side to the side of the wheel chock. Okay. This one's back a little bit, about seven inches back. Now how I did that is I did do, two, I, I set two bikes side by side and the handlebars of one bike go just as far as they can before they hit the gas tank of the other. So you can get them pretty close to each other. So within about seven inches, one just needs to be about seven inches behind the other. That's how my bikes were. Yours will be different maybe, but okay. And so, um, and this side over here is the same as this side, obviously. Um, in the back, uh, about six inches away from the, um, from the side is, I just put a center line. And then these, depending on the width of your back tires, mine with a little bit of space, uh, about five inches was the right spread for these two pieces of angle iron in the back. And, uh, and so each of these is five inches apart. Six, and I just put them on a six inch center line here. So same thing, six inch center line here. These obviously are on the center line. Um, and then this one, this whole configuration is seven, so I put this at three inches away, but your bikes may not be as long as mine. This is how mine worked out. So you definitely lay it out first, but I just wanted to show you how mine was and also how you um, really need to pay attention to the tongue weight. If it's too, you have too much weight in the back, it'll start swaying on you and things like that. It'd be bad news. You want, you want about 10 to 15% of the weight on the tongue. If it's more weight on the tongue, it's sort of okay from what I've read. Um, but you know, ideally 10 to 15%, you definitely don't want to go under that. If you have it 
more weight on the back, that's really bad news. It'll start swaying, swaying on you. Um, my, my trailer had no sway at all, zero. Okay, um, I got all the, I spent a lot of time with the bikes on there, on there, balancing it, making sure that it um, had the right tongue weight. With uh, two bikes loaded, there's about um, an extra 100 pounds on the, on the tongue, which is, is probably pretty good. It's, I think that's about right. So, um, but uh, anyway, based, based on that, I should be able to fit three bikes on here. I tested the bike configurations enough to think I can straps are gonna be a little tricky but I'll try to show that but here um, you have these tie downs out wide which is working well and now the only thing left I got to put uh, that tongue box on so I'm about to get into that and then I'm done okay for the most part I'm done I guess I am done, except I do have to change the LED lights to incandescent so they work with my Range Rover. But uh, those should be coming in a couple days. Other than that, it works. Got channels back here for the back back tires. Um, I have these um, these stands that um, I'm storing in in the box. Got the Harbor Freight um, front tire shocks. Um, I could take these off here. It's uh, tie downs go here. Uh, I'll show everything tied on as well. This box is really nice. Has a lock. Uh, I just right now I just have my straps in there. Spare tire carrier. The, everybody's out of the spare tires. Uh, all the so until I'm not going to install that until I get a spare tire. Uh, but it's one thing I need to buy. Um, overall, it was way 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 more work than what I thought. And so um, I think I probably spent about 800 on it, maybe a little more. I'll, um, I'll add that up and, and with the, all the materials. You can buy one for 16, 1700 that's very similar features to this. It wouldn't have the trailer box on it, but it would have a nice metal deck. Um, and uh, would I do it again? I don't know. I legit saved myself probably seven, eight hundred dollars, but it was a ton of work too. So probably, I bet I have forty hours in it. So. What's up, buddy? What? She said I love you. Oh, I love you too. Actually, the trailer is working uh, with the LED lights. I got the trailer signal. So I don't know what was going on earlier, but maybe I don't need to uh, change out to the incandescent lights. Looks like it's uh, detecting the trailer properly. Everything's okay. Here's this weird flashing caused by the range range rover detection. Maybe I do need to change the. I mean, it detects the trailer fine, it looks like, but then they have this weird like detection loop that happens that it, the car's not even on. So I really really don't want it sitting there doing that. That trailer light, I can't show it now, but it's going in and out. Plus, every once in a while, I get check trailer light. Um, I get a check trailer light message. So this thing definitely. It's not working right with the LEDs. I'm gonna have to change them out, but at least it is detecting it most of the time, detecting that the trailer's there. So it's probably doing the hitch points and everything right. Okay, just got back from my first trip. 
worked awesome. Everything worked great. No issues with it at all. Um, the only thing, if, if it's attached to the hitch, you don't really need the black pieces down here. Um, it's, you can put the ramp there and it's fine. Works great. Set, uh, it was on the highway at 70 miles an hour. No issues. Really happy with it. Had a fun ride today too. Just got back from a ride and now we're um, getting ready to fold it up and put it away. Okay, new incandescent trailer lights arrived. I don't think I'm going to put them on today. Kind of work, sick of working on the trailer, but definitely need to replace these LED ones with incandescent so my Range Rover works properly. Okay, this is, doesn't go quite as small, almost as small, but that box sticks out a little bit. Um, and then, obviously the, with these, it can't close completely. It just, it's a, no problem. Just put a little strap there to hold it. And definitely, if it's where any kids are, you wanna make sure that it's attached. But, there we go. Functional tilt motorcycle trailer for I don't know, probably seven or eight hundred bucks all added up. Okay, here's the screen list, um, or here's the, uh, okay, here's the parts list that I used as close as I, I saved most of the receipts, and so I got the part numbers and everything. Everything from Harbor Freight, um, the, including the trailer and all the parts from, from Harbor Freight. I also, um, if you open an account there, you can get a 10% transaction discount. Um, so I included that because I did get that. CarQuest uh, Auto Parts, you can definitely get this stuff cheaper if you look online. But here's the parts I got there, most of, most of the wiring stuff. I had some screws, the paint I had. For the most part um, my neighbor had a motorcycle ramp that I used you can get those at Harbor Freight as well the long one you can see video um, and then some zip ties I had you want some decent size zip ties for wrapping the conduit and then everything I got from Lowe's um, now you may be able to you definitely get this cheaper online if you shop the, the hardware is really expensive at Lowe's um, so that's all that's all the parts this, if you get this, you'll have a little bit extra here and there, but um, this, I ordered too much, and this is my best recollection of what I actually used or close to it. So the total for this was $760. So yeah, it was about seven dollars $800 like I thought. And um, so here's the parts list. Um, if you get this, you should be in pretty good shape. Okay, so some things that I didn't use that you see in the video, early part of the video, there's a jack that I got from Harbor Freight that attaches to the trailer. It's, um, and I decided I didn't really need that. It just seemed like more weight and more clutter. So I didn't install that. I actually returned it to Harbor Freight. The other thing is um, for these 3 8 inch bolts, I was able to, I had enough of the nuts that came trailer that I could use that all the way around so I didn't end up using any lock washers or anything like that on the um, or nuts I, I bought lock washers and nuts to go with these bolts I didn't end up using any of my reused uh, parts from the that came with the trailer and I had enough for that hey guys I hope you enjoyed the video please like subscribe and hit the reminder next to subscribe we're doing lots of dirt bike videos